<clears throat> I would highly recommend that those of you that are in the business of special event planning, that you pay very close attention to what the Department of Homeland Security has taken a look at in terms of the 18 infrastructure sites that they consider to be very critical. Because there's another one that's coming up on the radar. And the one that's coming up on the radar is not infrastructure. It happens to be mass gatherings. Math, mass gatherings are something that are very high on the radar right now in terms of law enforcement and public safety, not only for the safety aspects, but because they offer very lucrative targets. When you take the Hollywood industry, you take a head of state, you take a live telecast, and you put a bunch of people together in one confined location, and you've got a very highly desirable terrorist target. And I would, I would submit to you that in this planning process, in everything that you would have to be engaged in as a special event planner, you integrate and collaborate very closely with local law enforcement in whatever you have to do in terms of a budget from an old guy that's been through it don't police it on the cheap, because three years down the road, you'll be standing in a food line someplace. It's going to be very difficult to be able to recover from something like that. Now, <clears throat> some of the things that, um, that you see up here are issues in terms of the operational planning issues. <clears throat> the event itself, mass gatherings, venue location, crowd management, labor management issues. We could have the hypothetical that I just enunciated without the, uh, the foreign heads of state in it. And all of a sudden, there are labor management issues that start to percolate. On the night that the event's supposed to take place, everyone decides to go on strike that's involved in the catering business. And it'll happen within the 11th hour, just to cause embarrassment and to bring to attention the fact that all the media happen to be out there because this is a very highly publicized event. Those types of things are the small nuances that people don't like to talk about. <clears throat> because they're difficult, but they're those that cause you to look like I do with gray hair after a few years, <clears throat> because they keep you awake at night because you have to deal with those kind of things. <clears throat> the things right now that we are very concerned about from the local law enforcement perspective, and it's a term that we use, they're called active shooters, and it's essentially morphed out of the incident that happened in Columbine, embezzling Russia. Having individuals go inside of a location and to bring notoriety and to cause death and destruction to essentially engage in that type of behavior. Or pedestrian improvised explosive devices. I think there was another slide up here that had the misspelling in it, in it. it had VBEID, it should be VBIED, <coughs> vehicle borne improvised explosive devices. Pedestrian and vehicle types of devices we have not seen in the United States at this particular point. We've seen aircraft. Uh, IEDs, but not the VBIEDs that we have seen essentially overseas. It's just a matter of time, and I'm not predicting anything that's going to happen. It's just a matter of time. These are all things that I think that we need to think about, whether we're talking about uh, even a, a small wedding type of situation, because we could have a wedding party, that, and I guarantee you just about the time that we have a wedding party that's set up in a venue someplace, and we didn't really do our homework on the venue that we found out that we happened to be in some place that uh, someone misconstrued as being somebody else in the wrong place at the wrong time. And it was a shooting that was completely unrelated to the event. It doesn't make any difference, you know, what the cause was at that particular point. The fact that it happened is something that we probably missed a step somewhere along the way. Bomb threats, suspicious devices. I think some of those things we've pretty well covered up to this particular point. Some of the operational issues um, that we've pretty well covered, I'll say, for some of the comments and some of the questions that you may have. Uh, one of the things that I showed over here was the 1996 uh, Olympic uh, incident where um, uh, we ended up having an explosive device that went off and injured a whole bunch of individuals. And as you remember, it was not directly related to the Olympics. Uh, however, it was something that really caused a... Uh, a tremendous amount of problems for the security force because if there's one, there's others. <clears throat> and if you have an incident that occurs at a particular venue, you should not think in one dimension. If you have some, some sort of an incident that happens to you while the event is going on, look for others, not just one. Be thinking ahead. <clears throat> when you look at uh, you know, how much security is enough, you gotta have a good balance. You know, there's no 100% security, 
You can't put somebody in a bubble and be able to move them around. Even the President of the United States in this country has been a target on several of occasions, and they've been successful, unfortunately. <clears throat> so that when you look at the ideal piece of security, what we in law enforcement attempt to do is we want to be overt, but we want to be covert. We want to be subtle. We want to be balanced. We want to be able to make it friendly. We want to be able to support it. We want to be able to work with you. <clears throat> but we want to be able to have a handle on it so that if we have to go into a much higher profile in a response type of situation, that we're queued up in position to be able to react and react appropriately. Okay, I'm going to stop here at this particular point.